Hello everybody, I'm going to start with my new lecture today. The subject of this energy lecture is the question, can we solve our global energy problem? We will try to find out a scientific approach to what is the best energy system for our future. You all know what the problem is. At the moment still, most of our energy is produced from fossil fuels. So there are power plants which use coal or lignite. There is cars which use mainly oil. And our heating to some extent is done by gas. All this causes global warming and you know there's no way to continue this way. And I will explain you in this lecture why this is the reason why it is so dangerous to continue the way we are doing today. So what will be our future? Well, after coal, when I was young, everybody thought about nuclear energy. This was a great new thing in the 60s. And they started to build nuclear power plants everywhere and those things worked well to some extent, but they had problems, as you all know. There were accidents, there's a problem of the radioactive waste we have to care about and many other things. If you talk today with physicists about what is the future of our energy system, a lot of them will say, let's take nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is something we are working on also since 50, 60 years intensively and as a physicist I know it will work sooner or later but the question of course is will this solve our global energy problem or is it for example too expensive, too extensive to use. Then of course there is a solar community which says let's put everywhere rooftop solar photovoltaics so photovoltaics on your roof will produce your own energy. You are independent of other people. It's a local energy source which is available almost everywhere. So this is a solution. But of course also here you know the problems. If you come home in the evening and it's dark, you want to switch on your light. There's no solar power from your rooftop. So also here there are problems with storage, with intermittency and so on. So. Other people say the amount of power is not enough. We need big solar power plants. And one option is to put them into the deserts. I myself was part of the Desert Tech um, initiative. And we always said, let's put big solar power stations into the deserts and produce in a very large scale and very cheaply solar power. But also that up to now is not the main energy system we have. Other options, of course, you also know there is, for example, wind power. You have big wind parks. You can put wind on the sea, offshore wind parks. And of course, you have big hydropower stations today and many other things to produce energy. So in this respect, there are many options. And the question is, where shall we go? What is working and what is not working? This is the subject of this lecture, but the lecture will go beyond that because energy is only one of the problems we have. We have to talk about the carbon cycle because, for example, the fossil fuels produce CO2 and the CO2 problem is one of the main problems in the energy system. We also have to talk about water systems because water CO2 and energy are three main things in our world which ha we have to um, get control of because otherwise, uh, as I will show in the lecture, we will have problems in future. So what is the conclusion of the lecture? Well, the conclusion will be, yes, we can solve the energy problem. This is very good news. Yes, we can solve the energy problem. Energy is not the biggest problem we have on our globe. Yeah, that is what I try to explain you. And I will try to explain it in a way that also non-experts understand it. So the concepts are understandable for non-experts, but I also will try 
to put some more detailed scientific stuff into this lecture so that also experts may learn something from this lecture. As I said, the global energy problem is part of a global environmental crisis and the economic crisis we have. And I try to make this lecture interdisciplinary and also international in the way that we will certainly understand that there is not a way to solve the future if you don't look at the whole globe of the whole world we are living in. This lecture basically follows the book I wrote and this book is available for free for download. You can also buy it. Um, I don't get any money from the book so um, it's not in my interest to sell the book because uh, I get money from it but my interest is that you at least understand what possible options for the future are. The book I wrote is now almost three years old, but I think it's still up to date. But of course, there are a few things in it which have changed in the meantime, and I try to update that in my lecture. One thing nobody could think of is, for example, the Corona crisis. Yeah? Um, people say we are in the middle of the Corona crisis now. It's uh, March 2020, but I believe it's just the beginning of it. Anyway, what does Corona have to do with energy problems and climate change. Well, there are a few connections which we might discuss later in this lecture. For example, what we always heard since many years is that maybe one day in the permafrost regions, for example, there are things coming out of the earth like bacteria or virus, which uh, are related to diseases which have long passed mankind and now they are revitalized in a way by um, coming out of permafrost or uh, frozen ice somewhere. But this is of course not the main thing. Um, the main thing which I think we can learn out of this corona crisis is how does the society react on huge changes. If you look at the picture here for example you see all these Lufthansa planes are put to ground and um, they are stored at the airport in Frankfurt on the runway because the air traffic has more or less been shut down. A large fraction of the planes don't fly anymore. And this shows you that if there's a real need, um, society can react to this need. We always, if you think about climate change, we always wanted that people stop to fly so much because flying is very bad for the climate and we were thinking on how, what could be some the measures to reduce it. Now from one week to the next one things are stopped and society continues still. Of course this is not the future model but it shows you big changes in society are possible in a way. Um, but the big problem of climate change, of course, is that the people realize the problems only when it is too late. And the task of the scientists is that we tell the people early enough what the measures are to protect the world. Since about 10 or 20 years, scientists and the climate movement really tries to do everything to convince the other people and the politicians and economy that things have to change before it's too late. So in this sense we might learn something from the corona crisis but also that of course is just a side aspect of this lecture. So we are at the end of the first clip of this lecture now and to the end now I would like to show you the table of contents of the book. The lecture of course will be extended and changed. I don't know yet what I will tell you in the next few lectures in detail, but I will basically follow the book. So I will do some more introduction and then I will explain you the nexus of energy, carbon and water because these three cycles somehow are interconnected. Then I will try to 
show a picture how the energy system could look like in the time after the energy transition. And I will explain you the energy system I would propose as one of the most efficient ones for the future world according to current technologies. Of course, in future new technologies might develop and things might change and there might be other reasons to use different systems which are not uh, solely based on physics aspects but maybe have some other background. Nevertheless, I can show you the best what I think is available. And at the end we have to talk about political implications and what else has to change in our world in order to be able to set up this new energy system. Thank you for today and I hope you will continue listening to my lectures in future.